Hey, what's up, Internet? It's your soul, and I just want to show you this very, very interesting and revealing exercise that you can do with your mind and brain. And for me, this is one of the early steps I took that I would say really helped me to expand my own consciousness and help me zero in on how to think clearly and remove so much of the noise from the world around me. And it's amazing, and it's very, very simple. And I can only really describe to you how to do this. It's a practical exercise that you need to do. Whether or not you actually learn from this is up to you. And, you know, maybe there's people out there that might have more to add to what I'm going to say here and maybe will update me on what I think is going on here. But So this picture that you're looking at comes from a book called The Holographic Universe uh, by a guy called Michael Tolbert, now deceased. And it's one of the early books written to describe a model of reality that's holographic. And you may have heard certain science websites and publications talking about this and claiming, oh, this is new theory and so on. Well, no, it's not really. It's been around quite a long time. Uh, it's just that it wasn't in the mainstream. And as usual, people like to try and take credit for other people's work. But um, anyway, this is about reality creation. And you may have heard of many people describing and claiming that you create your own reality and that kind of thing. And often part of the justification for them saying that is that it's been shown in various ways that your brain actually creates the reality you experience. Uh, I mean, you could say it's modeling a reality that exists outside of you and your brain is just a tool for that purpose. Some people go as far as to say that actually, no, there is no reality. It's just inside your brain. Or it's within you, let's say, and your brain is a physical reflection of that processing component of yourself. And the universe is within you as well. And, you know, it's, very, it's not exactly the easiest thing to prove or disprove claims like that. For a long time, I've, I've taken the position that reality is inside of us. But the fine points of how to explain that in a reliable and repeatable way are not so simple. Um, and I think it's down to each individual to have their own experiences that teach them what they need to learn in that regard. But what this is going to teach you, if you do it correctly, is how your brain is essentially, essentially in a sense, deep faking reality. Uh, you may have seen the videos where in the last few months and years, people have been able to take one person's face and then use artificial intelligence to overlay it onto an existing video so that you effectively see a completely different person on the screen acting out a role or a famous movie scene or whatever it is. Um, so they call those deep fakes, and that is a reference to the way that the computer is kind of faking reality. Well, your brain, apparently, or mind at least, is doing that too, and this little exercise will show you that. So what you really need to be able to do is be in a position where you can move your face or eyes further away or closer to the screen until you reach a sweet spot, which I'll describe shortly. So if you're using a phone or a tablet, then that'll be easy. If you're using a screen, then you might need to move around a bit physically to get into the right position. But So the idea here is to um, hold the illustration at eye level, close your left eye, and stare at the circle in the middle of the grid with your right eye. Okay, now slowly move the image or your head, whichever's easier, uh, backwards, back and forth, essentially, along your line of vision until the star van vanishes from your peripheral vision, from your, from your vision, from the eye that's open. Uh, typically, it's going to be around um, 10 to 15 inches. The star disappears. Eventually, you'll see the star does disappear, or you should do, um, because it, according to this book, anyway, because it falls in your blind spot, and I don't have a better way of describing it than that. Now close your right eye and stare at the star with your left eye, obviously. It's now open. Move the book back and forth. Move the image back and forth until the circle in the middle of the grid vanishes. So you're repeating the same process, but instead of using the star and having the star vanish, you're having the circle vanish. When you've done that and you've reached the right distance and the, and the dot has disappeared, what do you see? Do you see an empty space where the dot was before? Or do you see a complete grid? with no circle in it. I see that, and that's apparently what everyone sees. And apparently that's because your mind or your brain, whichever you want to define it as, is literally manufacturing reality and not telling you. <laughs> your visual field of perception is not exactly a 100% accurate recounting of reality. 
It's your mind's calculation of what, what you perceive it to be, based on what exactly. Why is your mind filling in the gap of that circle with a grid? Well, it's presumably it's because it's, in a sense, speculating that the lines infer that they meet. So therefore, the mind's going to tell you the lines meet when they don't. So your mind is literally lying to you, in a sense, due to, you could say, intense reliance on pattern recognition, processing, which isn't actually based in complete reality. Let that sink in for a moment. What else could that infer? What else could that mean? What does that tell us about reality? First of all, just on a very basic level, you have a blind spot in your vision. <laughs> and, you know, most people probably haven't even realised that. Secondly, think about the sort of philosophical perspective on this. It effectively means that what you expect to see is what you see some percentage of the time, whether it's real or not. And we kind of know that through talking to people who um, will tell us they saw a certain thing or they believe a certain thing about a situation when we have a completely different perspective on it, even though we both took in more or less the same information. And often when when this situation when these situations are examined closely, we find that one or both people have misunderstood or misprocessed the information and come to a false conclusion. However, since this is directly affecting visual information and potentially other forms of direct sensory input as well, this, this shows that not only can people misinterpret information, they can actually insert false information and without knowing they've done it. From my perspective, it's very important to understand this. First of all, if you intend to understand reality and what's really happening in life or being created, because you need to understand that you can be deceiving yourself. First of all, your expectations fill in the gaps and your expectations are not necessarily accurate. So that's problem number one that you need to recognize and work with to actually prevent it from misleading you. Secondly, this means that there may be aspects of reality and events transpiring in reality to your mind is constantly filtering out simply because you don't expect them to be there. And I've actually had direct experience of this, which I won't go into now, but uh, this was covered in the quite famous documentary, What the Bleep Do We Know? This is where I first heard about this. And they claimed at that time, and I don't know if this is true at all, but they claimed that um, at the, in centuries gone by, when I think it might have even been Columbus landed on, on the shores of America, uh, it's claimed that certain tribal people didn't see the ships because their minds had never perceived a ship, they had no concept of what a ship was, so therefore they couldn't translate that form of an object into something their brain could perceive, so they just didn't see them. And it's claimed that only the shaman saw this ship arriving. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I, to be honest, doubt that that's true, but it could be true. But that principle actually is something that I've seen in real life in modern times, and I know exists. I've been in a situation where unusual things occurred. I and, a, and the people I pointed out these things to saw them. Most people did not see them. And so, and that's happened more than once. So I find this very interesting. And, and, and it's one of these things where it's like a key. Understanding that this is happening inside of you literally is a key that those that have this and work with it will greatly benefit from and be able to clear up a lot of their false thinking. And those who don't have this will basically be stuck in a certain degree of delusion until they figure it out. And they'll be certain, they'll be absolutely certain and convinced that what they're saying is true. But in reality, what they're seeing is just the result of their own expectations. And I, I experience this endlessly with talking to people about politics, science, health, you name it. People who don't really look into the facts of a situation and don't even research at all. And when I say facts, I mean, people argue about the facts. What is a fact? What isn't? But they don't even really seek to understand what facts are often. They, they just have an expectation. And they say, well, that's how things are. Therefore, you're wrong. Uh, without any real evidence to back up what they're saying. And that's an extreme example of what I'm talking about, but it's very common. So being as I understand that in order to improve life and to solve many of our problems, we have to reach a deeper level of understanding about ourselves and about life and reality itself. I understand that there's basically no point in trying to do anything to help society and in a big way until people improve their own inner state of being and understand these little pitfalls and programming glitches you could call them inside of us 
and give themselves a, a DNA genetic, mental, spiritual, emotional upgrade internally uh, so that they can actually start to uh, receive information in a pure way. So yeah, if you happen to be an expert in the brain or the mind or you've studied this subject before, I'd love to hear from you if you've got insight into this or the eyes even, the optic processes. If you've got insight, which I'm not aware of, I'm definitely not you know, an expert in those fields, particularly on a biological, chemical level. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear about it, anything about the blind spot and so on. And any other comments you may have as well. You know, this is a very, very intriguing, and exciting, and interesting subject. And I definitely recommend reading the book Holographic Universe by Michael Tolbert. It's one of the ones that I've referenced in my own book, which is still unpublished, which will be forthcoming at some point. So, yeah, I um, hope this has been of some help to you. And uh, if you've enjoyed this, do give me a like and an upvote on Steam, reblog, re-Steam. If you're on YouTube, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get full notifications if you like, because I regularly put out videos of this kind and many different topics that aim to be enlightening and point us in a direction of healing, balancing and evolving in general, which for me are the three most important directions we can head. So, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.